Good evening and welcome to Hot Topics from the Soul. I'm your host, Dr. Valerie Parker Hagen, and I'm so delighted to be here with you this evening. It is the day before the inaugural with President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. What an exciting time of transition for us as Americans. We've overcome a lot in the last few weeks and I have my co-host with me. Well, good evening, and what a great day it is, Dr. Val. I echo your comments. Inauguration tomorrow, a day that we've been looking for, and that a day that we believe is a day of new beginnings. And I think collectively, we continue to move forward. And I think that America can uh, regain its status and be better than before. Yes, yeah, so much has gone on. I mean, it has been literally what, 14 months of the coronavirus ravaging through our, not only the US, but the world. We've lost over 400 people to the virus. And, you know, everyone is looking optimistic, you know, hoping that this new administration coming in will have the answers, will have what we need to create that paradigm shift to take us from this place that we're in to us soaring and regaining and repositioning our lives to begin anew and afresh. But, you know, it took 14 months for us to get through this. Millions of people have been affected by the virus and 400,000 lives have been lost because of the virus. And, you know, everybody has questions about the next move. What does it look like? How is it going to transition? Who is going to get vaccinated? Who is not going to get vaccinated? And once you've been vaccinated, can you get it again? It's so many questions lingering in the air. And that's why I've invited a guest, Dr. Marcia Harris. She is a close friend of mine and she's out of New York. She's a medical doctor, an author, a speaker. And I've asked her to join us tonight. Dr. Harris, good evening. I see you. How are you? Going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy. Tuesdays, as I told you, are always really, really busy for me. And um, we literally, my last patient just walked out of here. So the girls are here. And if you if I could pan and show you the desk, you would go, oh my goodness. But <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Well, it's well, we so good to it's so good to actually see you. Yes. Well, we're thankful that you've taken the time. We know that it's busy and you're seeing patients. So we really consider it an honor that you would take the time to share with us and our audience tonight uh, because this is the time that people need information. They need comfort. They need to, they really need to know what, what are their options. They need to, they need to replace this sense of, uh, if you would, helplessness with a sense of help and Hopelessness with the sense of hope. Yes. And so, uh, once again, we're glad to have you on. And one of the things that is so important as we're looking at it, you know, uh, the United States reached an uh, unflattering, un an unwanted number today with over 400,000 people that have died from the uh, coronavirus. And uh, not to mention over 28 million people that are infected here uh, in this country. And and for all of us in our lifetime, we've not seen anything like this. We we haven't, you know, uh, we, we've seen flus, we've seen all of those things that, but uh, in our lifetime, we, we can't recall of anything that has been, just have wiped out so many people. And when you think of it, and, you know, even for those of us, and I speak in the term us, there are even COVID-19 survivors. Um, you know, we still have our questions. We're still trying to figure out what happened. What do we do to move forward? You know, are we gonna be all right? Uh, what are the side effects? And you put that against the backdrop of so much false information where people, especially people of color, who have been so, if you would, over-dramatized that we fear everything. We fear everything. Uh, we, you know, we're afraid 
uh, the Tuskegee experiment is so ingrained in our mind and those type of things and, and a history of, of things that created medical mistrust. But, you know, we have to have facts to overcome fear. And we have to have those things in this day and time because we're dealing with, you know, this is a Tuskegee back in that day. This is present right now. And what and how we respond to it right now will determine what the story, the story that is told years from now. Well, one of the problems, Dr. Ficklin, is just what you just said. There really are so few facts because we really don't have a clue. <laughs> I okay. hate to say that, but we really don't know. We really don't know. There is so much that we, there's more we don't know than what we know. Okay. Okay. Now, I am not an infectious disease person. And I'm not, I mean, I did internal medicine, but that was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. All right. But I, I think I have a little, so I'm looking at it from your standpoint, as well as from a medical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Putting the medical spin on it from your standpoint. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I, I, you know, the, what we do know, let's start there. What we do know, okay, so it's a virus and it originated in Wuhan, China. Okay, there are all kinds of conspiracy theories. It was sent there by the US and I'm sure you've, you've heard as many of them as yeah. I have. Yes. But mm -hmm. that, you know, it, that's where it originated. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, it, it appears as if they were not honest initially, because if they had been honest initially, well, I, I can't even say it that way. I was going to say if they had been honest initially, it probably would have been handled differently and we would not be now where we are. But with the administration's handling of it, I can't even really say that he probably would have done the same thing he did. So, you know, what can I tell you? However, uh, it came, it's here, and we have to deal with it. Now, the things that we have to remember, okay, we have precedents in the Spanish flu, in Ebola, in we have lots of precedents, okay, with this. The other thing that we know for a fact is that 95% of people who test positive don't really get sick. Okay. Mm. Say that again. 95% of people who have a positive coronavirus test don't really get sick. And why is that? Because they don't get sick. Okay. I, I it, also really, read some it really affects people who have comorbidities. How's that? It affects massively obese, diabetic, hypertensive, cancer, people with um, uh, compromised immune systems, people with something as simple as vitamin D deficiency. Wow. 80% of the people who have died, especially the people of color, were vitamin D deficient. Wow. Something as simple as that, 80%. Now, in general, a lot of people of color, most people of color are vitamin D deficient. I'm, I'm sure you've heard that before. Yes. yes. And when you think about it, we're told... Uh, to, if you look at the numbers, okay, they'll tell you that you need 400 milli IU of vitamin D a day. Now, when those norms were established, that was back in the 40s and 50s when scurvy and beriberi and, you know, that type of thing, when they 
this when they um uh put together those norms but what they don't tell you is that the the fat soluble vitamins you literally have to take 10 times as much as you need to get what you want it is that poorly absorbed in other words you're in you're based in florida if right. you get 40 minutes 40 to 45 minutes worth of good sunlight a day you will convert enough vitamin d through your skin that you will be fine i'm in new york <laughs> well, you know what i'm saying even if and, I, and something else even if i go outside in the sun in new york it'll take six hours worth of sun here because the angle at which the sun hits is different i mean something as simple as that well a question if we here we are in florida the sun is shining 98 percent of the time but yet there's a huge n amount of us that are still vitamin D deficient. And I know when this first came out, I heard reports saying that it won't survive in heat, that the virus won't survive, that it will burn off. So you, But if that be the case, then so many in Florida wouldn't be getting the virus. No. Well, for example, the, the mechanism that has been described in terms of the way the virus is actually contracted is that it's breathed in. So whether it's mouth or nose, or even they've even said through your eye, you know, that type of thing, but it's into your paranasal sinuses. If you notice when they do the test, I assume, I don't know if you've ever been tested, they go yes. literally all the way. It's like they're reaching for your brain <laughs> all the way. Through the there. Yes. Back, I mean, into the paranasal sinus. And basically, the postulated um, means of entry is uh, breathed in, stuck back there, grows, replicates back there, and then drips down, goes to the throat, and then gets into the trachea and into the larynx, okay? okay? And that's when, you know, the problem starts. And what happens is in terms of the heat, if you were to steam something like eucalyptus and lemongrass and tea tree oil, that type of thing, two, three times a day, steam, boil the water, put the drops of the eucalyptus and stuff in it, when it's boiling and starts steaming, put a towel over your head and go down, turn off the fire, of course, we don't want any accidents. Go down and just breathe in the steam. Something as simple as that two or three times a day, okay? Wow. Would actually, so when they say it's killed by heat, not the sun because it's 80 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You gotta get the heat into your paranasal sinuses. Okay. And you would do that with steam. Okay, so I, I, I also heard that drinking some hot every day or throughout the day, hot tea? Yeah, that's if it's, if it's here. If it's in your throat, if it's in your larynx, I guess that probably would indeed help. But the reservoir is in the paranasal sinus. Okay, so you have to actually breathe in that mist. Yes. You've got to get back there hot. You've got to get the steam back there. So let me ask you a question. I know that you talk about the steam, and you particularly mentioned eucalyptus and that type of thing, which is good. I know at the beginning, a lot of it was about taking, whether it was lemon or, or citrus hulls and, and, and uh, you know. And There's a lot of, lot of that as well. They will tell you to do, I think it's, lemon, ginger, onion, garlic. I mean, there's, there's several different combinations of concoctions, okay? <laughs> which literally, but that only deals with the throat and you've got to get what's up here. 
So let me ask you this. I, I am currently, I'm currently, I'm currently quarantined. Okay. I have COVID. I've been trying to get a negative test. Okay. And now, before you go any further, when you say you have COVID, you had a positive COVID test. Absolutely. May I ask a question? Have yes. you been symptomatic? Have you had any difficulty breathing? Have you lost your sense of taste and smell? Have you had a high fever? Have you had the symptoms of COVID, the disease? The only symptom I have really have had is really the loss of taste. Okay. I've had the loss of taste inside of it. I've not had a fever. I've okay. not really been short of breath, but a couple of times, and I'm gonna say it's probably no more than the fact of what I normally would get. I was yeah, I was dealing with coughing and running nose at one time. Okay. But but I'm not and no fever, no. no muscle aches, joint pains. No, none of now that. I have no weakness in my legs and things initially inside of it. But uh, I you know I, I didn't get the fever. I, I wasn't you know you know I wasn't. Oh, you didn't get to your lungs. Right. Good. And now, I, you were going to ask a question. I interrupted you. Ask your yeah, question. Okay. So my question is because I've tried to everything. I mean, it's a, it's a vivain tea or whatever, vervine tea. I've, I've, I've done it all. You know, the vervine tea, I've done the lemon ginger and honey. Uh, I've done it all. The vitamin D, the elderberry, the, I doubled down on my vitamin C. I've had things like uh, staminet. I've had a, uh, is it juju powder or juju powder or whatever? <laughs> yeah. I've so had you, you tried it's all the holistic stuff, yeah. all the herbal stuff. Okay. And, I, and I've done so. Uh, I've gone back twice. Well, third time today to get tested again. And I was positive each time again. Still positive. I, went, I went today. I got tested today and I'll know tomorrow whether, whether I'm neg negative or positive inside of that. I think my question is the fact that there are times I feel just fine. You know, and I was all fine, excited. So let me go get this test so I can get this negative. And I get it back and they both are positive. I'm going, well, there's no correlation between the way I'm feeling. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Remember what I started by saying, mm -hmm. most people who get COVID will not get sick. Right. Most people won't get sick unto death. Get sick. It, I'm sorry, Val. Won't get sick unto death. But he's he because a lot of it. people have died. Yeah, a lot of people have died. Absolutely, a lot of people have died. But as I said, most people that have died have been in a certain demographic. They've been older, or they've had comorbidities, or for whatever reason. For example. Even as simple as um, we know that what it does. I'll also say some, let me say something else and I'll come back to that. What was being done initially in terms of treating the disease was entirely wrong. Like those ventilator settings and stuff that they had initially, they were treating people as if they were treating a regular normal pneumonia. And it's not a regular normal pneumonia. It was wow. more uh, blood clotting abnormality than an infection. Okay. Gotcha. What was happening is that you were having these little mini bleeds and blood clots and consolidation in the alveoli. That is the the, the cells of the lungs. Mm -hmm. All right. And when they the, the ventilator settings that they were using initially all right was actually i hate to say it but killing people because they were setting it for x when what was happening was y if you notice now even though they're still putting people on the ventilators they're getting them off the yes. first two or three months you got on the ventilator honey you are not coming off yeah. But that was because we did not know what we were dealing with. After they did the autopsies and they figured out what it really is and, you know, was, then they've been able to better treat, even if you do get sick. Hmm. 
Interesting. So this brings me to the shot. It's new and they're trying to pushing, shuffling people to get it. And then I saw on the news today that uh, 40,000 people are due for the next shot and aren't going to be able to get and haven't been able to get it in time. They're past the time that they should have gotten it after the first shot. Oh, so really? then, wow. yeah, that was on the news today. Yeah. Oh, I have, as I said, I've been. I know you've been working. You're a medical I'm, doctor. I haven't heard any news yet today. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday is the first news I hear is 11 p.m. Yeah. Okay. So your question there, I, I guess, is twofold. Number one, in terms of those people where it's going to be late getting the second shot, what, yes. what is that going to do? Yes. I wish I could tell you. Um, we, really, we don't know. Oh, no. we, okay. we really we really don't know see one of the one of the things that and, and again talking about the vaccine I have a couple of problems with the vaccine it's an mRNA virus vaccine most vaccines I mean all all vaccines so far basically are either live or attenuated or whatever, but their DNA, they have never been able to do an mRNA vaccine. And the one back in 2000, I think it was 2002 with the original SARS, and then 2000, they started, they started in 2005 trying to do a vaccine, an mRNA vaccine. And they were unable for 15 years. And the animal trials were really bad. The animal trials were really, really bad. Now they explained that by saying that they didn't really have the money. And because they didn't have the money, they were not able to go forward. And what happened and what made the difference with this time is that they got funded. The government funded it so they were able to push it through. But mm. they didn't tell you, they skipped several steps. In terms of the normal uh, vaccine coming to market, they skipped several steps, including most of the animal studies. So the problems I have with the current vaccine is number one, it's an mRNA um, vaccine, which means it's brand new technology. We have no idea. Mm. They they don't they cannot even tell you how long immunity is going to last with this vaccine. And go on the CDC site and check it out. They cannot tell you how long immunity is going to last. We don't know. Number right. one. Number two, mm. we cannot tell you, all right? Now, you, you said that the, there are people, 40,000 people are not going to be able to get the second dose on time yes. or whatever. Okay, um, we don't know, again, whether when they get the second dose, that means they're going to need a third dose or whatever. This is all, they're playing everything by air right now. The information is not available because this is not the norm. This is not the norm. Yeah, uh, Dr. Harris. Yeah, you know, I, I heard you talk about the mRNA inside of that, and and for for the layman, they may not necessarily understand what that means. And I and I go back to the fact, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that normally when we're talking about a vaccine, generally the vaccine is generally comprised of a weak or a dead germ of the very thing that you're of the very thing. Of that the very correct. thing that we're trying to cure inside of this. And and that that is injected, you develop right. and you develop, antibodies. Develop, a response, develop antibodies to it. So when the body sees it again, it recognizes it and therefore right. can fight it off. Right. And, it, things work. and so this is where we've been impacted so far. And, and, and I think the thing that goes on in my mind is this. We know that a lot of this turned very political at one time because it was such a pandemic globally 
you would think that the most leading scientists all over the world would have been together and saying, let's race for a cure. Let's see what we can do. Let's exchange information. But it, it, it is all- They have 200 different, more than 200 different groups trying to do their own vaccine. Right. Is, is there a reason for that though? Is it for, is it for purely bragging rights? Is it political? Can you see my hand? Money? Yeah. Money? <laughs> okay, so with that being said, I may be asking a question which I, and, and with that being said, it seemed to me, and it may seem this way, because after our current administration kind of basically said, hey, we're pulling out of uh, you know uh, the World Health Organization, we're pulling out and all those things there, that to me wasn't a smart move. I figured at this point, we needed to be at the seat of the table where all the leading people that was there that was doing the research inside of it. I particularly have concern because of the different vaccines that have been approved. Uh, whether it was the, uh, you know, whether it's the Moderna or the Pfizer, and now the Johnson one is coming on board, and all these different things. And the problem is, is the fact that you start off by saying there was dishonesty from the beginning in what was revealed. And I'm telling you, that dishonesty has been perpetuated throughout by different ones, and it has put us in this position that we're in. To the fact that when you hear the report that Dr. Val talked about, that's the result of the lies that's been told that we have all these vaccines and we did not have all these vaccines. Stick a pin. It's not approved. It's approved for emer it's an it's an EUA emergency use authorization. It's not approved. Mm. Wow. Emergency use authorization. I looked, at a, I looked at a presentation by Dr. Simone Gold and also listened to Dr. Anthony Fauci and, and both of them actually are saying the, the same thing you're saying. It's not approved. But it's true. It, it is not approved. It's, it's not but, approved. It is but not yet approved. people are panicking. Want it's it. an emergency use authorization. It's an EUA. It is not an approved item. But the reality is that while this is happening, do we have the assurance that there are still scientists that are working in the background that are still working for something that can be approved, something that does work? Because, you know, uncertainty and fear, it only perpetuates people's sense of anxiety. So we have some people that don't want to get it, some people that want to get it. Uh, some people that feel like, well, you go ahead and be the guinea pig. Let me know how it turns out. So we have all these things That's going me. on. <laughs> That's <laughs> me. <laughs> I told my husband, I said, you can go ahead if you want. I'm going to quarantine you in the other bedroom. And as soon as you walk in there, talking about, ooh, you get that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, be, it's still being worked on. Yeah. Um, it's still being worked on. Um, even the ones that have been approved for the emergency use authorization, the, the whole uh, process continues. Mm. So, yes, it's still being worked on. The problem is, as I said, th there are like six different steps. And in order to get the EUA, they've skipped a couple of steps. All right. Well, I imagine some more steps are going to be skipped because they're saying with the new administration, they're saying a hundred thousand a day. No, 100, oh, 100,000 a day. Okay. I thought he said he wanted a hundred million people vaccinated. He does. And his first one. Oh, yeah. Months, you might be so right. Yeah. I, I just can't million. comprehend that. Yeah. He's that. That's what he says. But again, I mean, they're looking at it from one angle and not from the other. OK, there are certain things that you really need to know, like safety. All right. Now, don't get me wrong. It appears so far to be relatively safe. OK, but uh, is it working? Is, appears so far. Mm -hmm. They have no clue six months or six years from now what this is going to mean. The other thing that's happening is that there it has mutated so many times.
they're not even sure that by the time you get the vaccine, it will not have mutated another 10 times and therefore won't be effective for that strain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know. Now it 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 really it really is a conundrum because mm -hmm. you're really you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. All Which right. It's very scary. It is scary. Well, it's scary. We look at what's you ask the question, what's the worst that can happen if I absolutely do nothing? Um you do nothing. Well, you see, right now you're in a good position because you've been positive, so you've had COVID, quote unquote, the likelihood is you will build your own antibodies. Now, we don't know how long those are going to last either. Oh, boy. You mean say they can't give me no guarantee? Come on now. Let me know something. They can't. <laughs> they can't. They cannot. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, now, before the shot and all that, they were talking about plasma. Okay, so for people who are very sick, yes. And once he has been, for example, uh, proven to have antibodies, he can donate his blood that they can basically take his antibodies and give somebody else. Mm. You understand? Yeah, I actually feel safer getting his blood than getting a shot. How about that? Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, my blood type is Rocky Roll. No, I just see that. <laughs> Okay, and also talking about blood types, um, I also was searching and I, I read that certain blood types um, help also with an immune defense to the COVID-19 virus. That's what they said, yes. And, and th there are a lot of, for example, um, people of color who are like APOS, you know, yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people who are a positive and they have they correlated it to, to a number of things. As I said, they've correlated it to vitamin D deficiency. They've correlated it to blood types. They've correlated it to a number of different things. You know, but okay, so this is all going flying by the seat of your pants. We really oh, about don't know. Yeah, because because Dr. J, you said you're you're a positive? Yes. Well, that's not good because you got it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he'll be fine, and I'll he can fine. help other people. Yeah, and, uh, and, and could have considered the fact I'm a positive. I have it. I have comorbidities with with diabetes, and you didn't get sick, right? And so, to a certain degree, that's the one thing I have looked at and said, "Wow, thank you." You know, yeah. it's like I don't want to. I don't want to feel too loud because I'm actually doing. Compared to what I could be. My my family in North Carolina. I have an 89 year old aunt, and my cousin is in her 50s, 55, 56. Her husband, I'm not even sure how old she is. A couple of years either way of her, and they have five girls. Well, one is away in college, but there are four girls there, and um, one just had a baby. She didn't get it. The baby didn't get it. Everybody else in the house was COVID positive. One of the girls had a fever and felt achy for a couple of days, two or three days. And the fever broke and she's been fine. And my 89 year old aunt got sick. She's the only one in the house. Everybody was positive. Nobody got sick, no fever, no nothing, except one girl. And then my aunt got really sick. I mean, she was passing out and, you know, high fever and she got sick. She had all the symptoms, the cough and the, you know, production and everything else. And she never had a problem breathing, however. Aha. So whatever they did, it really never got into her lungs. Okay. Which is the key. Okay. She never had a problem breathing. They they literally she would pass out and they'd have to wake her up and mm. you know, whatever. And she was pat like every day and then every other day. And this went on for a couple of weeks. They took her to the hospital, they did CAT scan, they did everything. Everything was negative, except she was COVID positive. 
and she never had a breathing problem. The sec at the end of the second week, she went back and she again had a fever, et cetera. And they kept her in the hospital. They wanted to admit her. And I basically told them, go sign her out. <laughs> go and sign her out of the hospital. And my cousin was like, but, but, and I'm like, go and sign her out. And my cousin's husband was literally crying. He was like, Mars, Mars, I told my wife, I told my wife, he's Haitian. I told my wife, I told my wife, no leave mom there. We can take better care of mom at home. No leave mom there. I said, I agree with Shopee. Go and get her. They went and they signed her out. Because at 89 years old in the hospital, she's not going to be their priority. Right. Now, if she was having problems breathing, my advice would have been different. You understand what I'm saying? But she was maintaining her O2 sat on her own. She did not need to be in there. Wow. That was three yep. weeks ago. She called me yesterday and said, Mom's negative. So, 89. Wow. God is faithful. Amen. There's so much that we don't know, as you say, and we're learning as we go. You know, even as recently as yesterday, a dear friend of mine. Uh, share with me because she did not know I was, you know, positive and going through it. But she shared with me that she was dealing with the fact of her sister, her younger sister, husband of 20 years, just passed a few days ago with COVID-19. And it was very interesting because she was very interested to hear my symptoms because she was trying to compare it to what happened to her brother-in-law. And she talked about the fact that at first there wasn't any symptoms, then it was a cold and, and, and it built up. And then they went to the emergency room and they tested and they found out he not only had COVID, but he also had pneumonia. Mm. And from that part, it just rolled downhill with them. And they actually thought he was going to you know, come home. So, and it just went down here. He ended up on the ventilator, like you said, and um, it was devastating. He passed. Mm. And he, he, he passed in yeah. still trying to figure out. But here's the part that we found intriguing. Her sister and he, they, they, they slept in the same bed the whole time he went through that. She didn't get as much as a cold. She had no symptoms and she tested negative. And it's just kind of amazing. Now, can I say something else? There's also been a problem with the test. Mm -hmm. Okay. The PCR test, which they're using as the gold standard, mm -hmm. is actually has as many false negatives as it has false positives. Mm. Okay? Because the way the PCR is run, it is diluted out to 35 dilutions, 35 levels. You know, go back to high school chemistry. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Mm -hmm. And you take anything out that far, we can get a positive. Mm -hmm. Literally, take anything yeah. out that far, you can get a positive. Okay, so there's a lot of false negatives, and there's just as many false positives mm -hmm. with the test. There's been there've been problems with the test. As I said, this is totally uncharted territory, totally uncharted territory, and literally. The medical community, we're doing the best we can, but they really don't have a clue. Wow. Wow. Now, you mentioned a test. You said PCR. Now, that's different from, you know, I'm seeing that they're doing antigen tests, you know, and, and those type things well, the, there. The antibody is, is the blood test. Well, that's right. PCR is blood as well. But the antibody is after you've had it or been exposed or even after now the people who are getting the vaccine they will test to see if the immune system has developed the desired reaction so that when it sees it again it will recognize it and therefore take care of it wow mm -hmm. you you gave a perfect description of the initial because when i first got my first test several months ago and I, you know, I'm at a fair, I'm at a, a community event, 
and they they took that nasal thing that looks like this giant Q-tip, and I'm telling you, I thought they were trying to tickle my brain, you know. Yeah, they were. And, 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 and that's what it felt, and I mean, and they did it, that came back negative. I had another one months later, it was the antigen one, okay, I was fine. However, the 31st, when I went because of my symptoms I was having, and I went to get tested then, what was interesting, Although they swapped, they did not go all the way up my nose this time. They just, they took the swap like that. And they just basically just almost like they was tickling me up there on both sides. <laughs> you know, and that's they did what, both sides. They did both sides. And I got a positive. Hmm. However, interesting. when I went back to another place last week to go get tested as well as today, they went in the back of my mouth. The swab. The, so it's interesting because I was looking for them to go back to nose, and that's where they're going all the way back there, you know, and say, say ah. mm -hmm. depends on which test they're doing. Gotcha. In terms of where they go and what they're looking to get. Gotcha. Okay. In terms of which secretions they're using. It depends. There are several tests out there. Okay. Several okay. tests. Is yeah. one better than the other? So they say, I, I that I can't tell you really. So they say, yes, mm. you know. But all the like the airlines and the the countries where you have to get tested before you come in and whatever, everybody is requiring this PCR test, mm -hmm. and it has as many false negatives as it has false positives. Gotcha. Okay, so those that let's say Dr. J has had COVID and um, the shot comes around. So he really doesn't need to take the shot because he's already have it. Well, you know what? They're telling people, even though you've had COVID, go and take the shot. They are telling people that. Now, I don't agree with that necessarily either. He needs to go and see if he has antibodies on his own and see if that comes back positive which if he really was positive, it should, make sense? Yes. It should come back positive. And if that comes back positive, then wait that out and see how long his own antibodies last before going and taking the shot. Now, mm. they are advising people in general, everybody just go get vaccinated. Which I'm I agree, not doing I that. I don't agree with. I'm not doing that. But if my husband get it, I'm having a bat by my bed. <laughs> oh no! It's the night of the Walking Dead. That's funny. <laughs> no, I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad the right I'll call Jay first. I'll call Jay first and say I need an injection of your blood. <laughs> <laughs> boy, if I if I'm real good and I and I have antibodies, boy. This could be profitable for me. No, it's it just could. <laughs> they are paying up to twelve hundred dollars for plasma. Oh, they are. Yes, oh, I didn't even know that. I mean, yes. everybody I know so far who's given plasma donated it because it was, you know, a family member, a friend, whatever. But um, I, I guess they would pay. You know, it's valuable. Hello. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can we freeze it? Don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I, I'm just trying to figure out if I need to hook him up. <laughs> now, so I'll, 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 I'll take it out. I'll, I'll process it. Yeah. I'll be like, Dr. Marcia, can you come down here and get some of his blood? Well, that, that, that You never turn off that entrepreneurial spirit, do you? <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> yes, yes. But that was my concern, too, whether or not, you know, when it was all said and done, because before I before I contracted it, I had already said I was going to take the vaccination, and and I was, and that is totally, you know, we had a guest on a few months ago uh, who he was an infectious disease doctor, but we kind of borderline about the fears and the medical mistrust and the things that has happened. And one of the things he talked about that we often go back to Tuskegee experiment, but he talks about the fact, look how long ago that was, and all the different, if you think all the different precautions and safety measures that have been put in place since that time. And 
And so we're damned if we do, if we damned if we don't. Brother man, they still using us. Hello. <laughs> well, I put it this way here, Dr. Marcia. I'm gonna put it to you like this. One of the things I have had a problem with is our governor in the state of Florida. Uh, he is he he's Terrible. been the biggest politicizer of it. So yeah. um, two weeks ago, you know, uh, three weeks ago, he he releases this whole thing about vaccines. He he develops a partnership between the Department of Health and our pharmacies like Walgreens and Walgreens. CVS, Publix, Public. and all those kinds. And everybody, and he developed a relationship with supposed to the faith community, but he made it available to every county but our county here in Palm Beach. And so what's a problem? Really? Yeah, so we're going, why? Where? I'm like saying, why? I know that his buddy lost Palm Beach County in the election. You know, we, we was totally the other way. And so I know his buddy, number 45. But the, but then at the last moment when there was some pushback, he then selected two churches out of this large county to be able to distribute, you know, have vaccine testing. Problem was, it didn't get out to the community in time. And so a new supporter called me after finding out and she started questioning. I'm like, I have no idea why the governor is playing these games. Because the fact, number one, how did he choose the church? Who was his advisory committee? Why is it that he's doing what he's doing? And I want you to hear this because this is so important. The church that did, one of the churches that administered it is a historical church here, and they're great with social services program. They do a lot of things, but they got such a short notice themselves about it, so they didn't even get a chance to get it out. But here's the striking thing. About 700, only 700 vaccines, 700 tests, a vaccination was administered that day. Out of that 700 of a church that is in the heart of a black community, I am told by an eyewitness that was there that only about 20 people were black and the rest of the people were white. And they were coming from places as far as New York and every part there. Led me to think, first of all, how did they even get the word that the test was going on and people around the neighborhood didn't even know? And so, wow. but, but here's my other part. If I had that many of those people there and I could have gotten there that day, I'd have been right there because I figured they're not going to get any of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might have been safe inside. Yeah. But, uh, and here's the thing. I'm not going to take the shot from driving up at the Hard Rock and sticking my arm through the window. If I get a shot, it's going to be the same shot they give the doctors and they give the president. You're not going to shuffle me through no line like I'm going to take the mark of the beast or something. No, 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 no. I want the shots that the medical people are getting. But we already know I'm just getting Jay's blood. <laughs> hey, I get it. I'm coming for some, too. And I'm a positive. So. <laughs> Okay. All right. You guys have both been vampires. Uh, vampires. vampires. Yep. <laughs> that is for sure. But, but, you know, we do want to ease the fears of people. I think information is powerful. I, I do believe that you, if you give people enough of the facts and information that people can then make their own decision. Absolutely. They can make their own decision whether they want to or not for whatever reason or not. But I know at the end of the day, no one wants to be controlled by fear, fear of right. dishonesty, fear of uh, the fear of the ambiguity, the fear of just the fact of of, 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 of of intentional scare tactics. Everyone wants to be safe because, you know, it was said that eventually we want to reach her, herd immunity, you know, so that, you know, we're, we're, we're covered. But I, I don't know if we're going to reach herd immunity. I, I don't know how long it would take. And I'm not trying to be part of the herd. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already are. You got it. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you already are. Yes. Whether by design or by choice, you already are. But, but yes. that's interesting, though, because of the fact that mm -hmm. it's like Dr. J got in and so many people have were tested positive and have it. It seems like there should be an event right there in itself. Well, okay. Herd immunity is not reached until normally 66% of the population has been either vaccinated or has had it. And um, Fauci is actually saying for whatever reason, he, does, he thinks it's going to take more than 66% here. 
And I think they're pushing that as money. They want everybody to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So. But even he says that it's not a cure because it is, it's not been tested, that he doesn't know if it'll work, that he still says wear a mask, have our hands washed. Oh, yeah, but yeah. It do doesn't. That. Well, that's the other thing with the vaccine. It really doesn't change anything mm -hmm. because it doesn't prevent transmission. It does not prevent transmission. Okay, so it really doesn't change anything. You still got to wear the mask. You still got to, I mean, all the hygiene things that you got to do, you still got to do them. Mm -hmm. You know, it does not prevent transmission. Doesn't prevent transmission. You don't know how long the immunity is going to last. Okay, you don't know. I mean, there are people who they've been saying who've been vaccinated and come up with COVID with a week later. Yeah, I've heard that too. Et cetera. Okay, so there is just so much that is not known. We're literally flying by the seat of our pants. So how many people you think here, I call it like we were reading the fine print, like we were saying the fact, you know, emergency use authorization, who okay. understand that that's different from literally being approved and, uh, you know, improving. Mm -hmm. How many of us really believe that once we get the vaccine and we're vaccinated, that boy, that's good. That's it. I won't be able to be, I won't be able to catch it. Or I won't well, be able that's to catch the it. problem. Most people think what you just said. Most people think, oh, I'm vaccinated. I'm fine. But that really is not the reality. That really yeah, that's my fear. I fear that more than anything, that people feel that because they have the shot that they really slack off and then it, they have it and expose other people because they figure they got the shot. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. They could be injected with water, they don't know, because of the, especially if you produce in 100 million a day and you expect that to be distributed to the general population, well, that's dangerous. Well, I, I, I am going to trust the integrity of my colleagues. I'm, I, you know, I have to do that. I, when somebody, when I write a prescription for somebody for uh, blood pressure medicine, I have to assume that what they're getting is what I wrote the prescription for. Right. I'm going to have to trust. That doesn't bother me that because I'm going to trust the integrity of my colleagues. You know? We're, we're, we're really not bad people. <laughs> right, right. We're really, we really are not bad people. Right. You know? So I'm going to have to trust the integrity of my colleagues. Well, well, I think we have a lot of work to be done. I think with the incoming administration uh, definitely being very aggressive and, and rightfully feel like they have to because we, we've wasted so much time through the foolishness, through what I call the antics, through the lies, through the promises that was never going to manifest himself, that no now comments. what we're looking at is that, you know, you know, and people get very afraid when we say, well, probably the only way to really slow this thing down is to shut down again. And, you know, and so that's a big fear inside of shutting down again. But yet it's still there has to be some place of containment, because I do believe that over a period of time, there are those that have just simply become, you know, I mean, They've thrown caution to the wind. They they're dying to go. Pardon the pun. They're dying to go back to life as normal, why actually, while actually putting themselves at risk and others as a result of it. And it's become so politicized now that even if you're telling someone you mind wearing your mask, or you know you're too close to me, you deal with people being offended inside of that. And yet, it's still only thing you're saying is that I would like I choose to live, I choose to be healthy. I choose to protect myself. And, 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 you know, the fact that there is so much question about this and there is so much at stake, what does it, I mean, you know, what does it take off you to wear a mask? Nothing. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I think if it's mandatory across the state and not like some governors, just like our governor won't do a mandate 
for the mask. I think if it's done, if everybody's mandated to do that and keep their hands washing that going in and out of establishments, they have the dispenser for them to sanitize, that it would help cut it down. But because you have some places, just like I go to, when I went up to Naples and Port Charlotte, where our children are in Tampa, it's like they're easy breezy. They're like, uh, some people wear masks and some don't. And it needs to be mandatory across the board. That's just my business is that I'm sticking to it. Yeah, and you can tell the difference in each state because you come back down here in my in Palm Beach County and you look at like you got three heads if you don't have a mask on, you know, going inside of a place. And you know, you, oh, excuse me, because people look like, where are you going? And, uh, and I don't think we're as quite of a, as offensive because the fact we understand the stake. And uh, unfortunately, almost every family has had someone who's been touched by COVID-19 who has passed. Uh, you know, I have a cousin that was like your folks. Everyone in the house uh, ended up diagnosed with uh, being caused with COVID-19. And unfortunately, the matriarch of the family passed and she didn't have it long, but she did have underlying conditions. And uh, you know, and and I was heartbroken because she was so instrumental in my growth growing up in Alabama. And um, and the fact when I heard, when I saw it on Facebook, I didn't get a phone call. I saw it on Facebook that she had passed. And I'm like, and I had to, you know, find out what happened. And it happened so quickly. And so we have to do all we can while we can to protect ourselves. Well, it has been a pleasure having you, yes. Dr. Harris. I'm glad to see you. I, yeah, I don't think I've seen you since. No, I think I saw you one time since I got married. Yes. Yeah. So it's been a it's been a while, but so glad to see you and thank you so much for the information. And hopefully, I can have you back again once we're on the other side with the new administration to see what is going to take place with this COVID nineteen pandemic that we're in, and also how we can be elevated to the next level. I've been posting your website, drmarciaharris.com. Is there any information that you want to share? before we sign off? Just that uh, in general, uh, my, my new practice is the Wellness Restoration Center. And basically we need to be sure that we do what we need to do so that our immune systems can actually take care of us. And I think that's one of the reasons my 89 year old aunt didn't succumb. You know, she is always, they're the vegetarian. She's, you know, she's always been healthy, quote unquote. So even though she has a mild heart problem and severe hypertension, which were her two comorbidities, because I mean, she eats 80% raw and all of the above. I mean, she really has always taken such good care of herself. And I really think that's why she's still with us, you know? Awesome. And it's, it's the practice that I'm doing now is mostly integrative and um, is still allopathic, obviously, because I tell people, as you know, Val, if I get hit by a truck, or if I get COVID-19 and I'm sick, please take me to the nearest hospital. But in general, I'm going to do what I need to do to build my immune system so that if I even get exposed to it, I will be able to stave it off. Awesome. So, well, we thank you for joining <laughs> us and we look to you have so you back on you. real I hope, I hope it was helpful or informative. Very much so. Very much so. Absolutely. And we're going to sign off and with Ray Charles, America, the land that I love. Good night and God bless. Good night. Good night.